too many games feels from, from the first part that you may be saying you'd like more games. Am I interpreting that correctly? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Because, I mean, I think when, you know, again, for us, a club like us who, who wants to, you know, sort of, when you want to compete, you know, at the highest level against the best, you need a strong squad. To have a strong squad, you need consistent games and consistent game time and opportunities. So, you know, at the moment, if we get an injury, we're liable to throw in somebody who hasn't played for four or five weeks. It just doesn't. It's not easy on that player, whereas if you've got games, there's a natural rotation that you need to make there all the time. And it also gives you a little bit of rhythm, whereas, um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I had the other extreme last year, or the last couple of years at Celtic, we were playing 60 plus games a year, you know, but I found that a lot easier to manage than having less games or, you know, like I said, having a disrupted season like we've had this year. So you don't, because Europe's kicking in again for the clubs around you, you mm. Don't think you've got an advantage now until the end of the season, and that you've got fewer games. Oh, well, um, I don't know. I, I don't think there's advantage or disadvantage. It depends how you use that time. But if you're asking me, would I rather be in Europe? Absolutely, a thousand percent. I'd rather be in Europe at this time playing games. How do you sort of recreate? Intensity is obviously a massive part of your mm. style, and I guess it's very difficult to recreate that match intensity mm. these long weeks of training. But mm. I guess you've got to try. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges of that? Yeah, um, yeah we, we, we do. We do try and sort of replicate. You, you can't, obviously you can't do it sort of exactly the same way as uh, as game day because they're rather sort of, you know, variants that come into that. But, but certainly on a daily basis, we, we try and train at a tempo and intensity that's going to be close to replicating what happens on game day. Um, and we've done that consistently all year anyway, irrespective of whether we've got a game or not. You know, what we adjust is the amount of time we're out there. So, you know, if we, if, if we want a less volume session, we just, you know, tone down the time. So, you know, we're out there for less minutes, but the, the intensity and tempo stays the same. So and I think it's probably been the one area of our game this year that's been, been consistent. And if there's one area of our game that's kind of got us to where we are right now, it has been that, 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 you know, when you look at some of the physical parameters across the league, we've, we've been outstanding. And, and I think that's that's kind of helped us overcome, you know, the lack of, you know, for want of a better term, sort of the, the quality in our play at times. You're talking about data, what the data showing yeah, you. Can yeah. you be a bit more specific about what yardage cover? Or? No, it's just, I mean, most of the, you know, I think most of the high-speed metrics, I think we'd be top of the league. Um, so... And like I said, I think you, you, know, you need something. I mean, you know, I, I, I kind of, I try and paint, paint an accurate picture of how I feel about how we're going, but we're going okay. We're going maybe better than okay. And I think there's a reason for that. And you can look for reasons why we're not going better, but there's some pretty strong reasons why we are where we are as well. Um. And just back to Richarlison, he was pretty open about his mental psychological obstacles he had earlier this season. So it's a bit of a setback for him personally this injury. How is he psychologically? Yeah, no, as far as I know, he's I mean he's disappointed he's injured and he's not playing, but um yeah, aside from that, um, you know, he's sort of into his rehab now and he's uh you know, luckily we've got sort of the international break in between, so hopefully uh, only means he'll miss sort of the, the couple of games this side of it and be ready for after. With all these injuries Pre-season, you've assumed they've described you as a father figure. Does it feel like you've had to that sort of pastoral element of looking after the players has had to be on another level this season? Um, oh, to a certain extent, but at the same time, you know, I'm not a sort of one-man show. There's a lot of good people at the club that you know, and and yeah, a lot of the coaches and a lot of the sort of you know medical or sports science staff spend a lot more time with the players individually than I do, and um, you know, I think. They've they've done a you know a great job in sort of helping guys through their processes. Obviously, I'm I'm there, um, you know, when needed, or if I feel like I need to sort of you know help the process uh, as much as I can. But also, you know, I understand that you know a lot of times you know players have maybe close relationships or, or, or are more comfortable with with you know people they're working a lot closer with on a daily basis, and um, I think that's important. But again, it's not. It's not where we want to be 
you know, as I keep saying, I, I still think there's a lot of things we need to to adjust in the way we work and, you know, with, with our environment, which is not, um, you know, being critical of what we've got at the moment, but it, it was impossible that everything was going to change in, in eight months or nine months of me working here, so we've still got areas we can improve there. Just finally, Brian Sesson, you know, after he had surgery, he put a message out on social media in which he basically appealed to fans to be kind effectively and not, not abusing online, which was quite depressing to read. What did you make of that? What does that say about where we're at? As a yeah, look, I, I mean, I didn't. I mean, I, I, I didn't read it. You know, they made me aware of it. And, and look, it, it, I guess the easy thing to say is, look, just stay off social media. But I, And it's easy for me to say, and I can do that. But I, I guess for younger people, it's... It's it's a vehicle for them uh, or a platform for them to, to kind of have a voice, which I kind of understand. Um, but you also, you know, they've got to be mature enough to also know that sometimes the audience, you know, I, I think <laughs> for want of a better term, social media is like walking into the prison yard and saying you're innocent. You're not going to get a hell of a lot of sympathy, you know, and most of it's going to be, coming back at you you know so if you've kind of prepared for that then you know but if you if you're jumping in there to try and feel good I just my sense of it and like I said I'm not all over it but you'll rarely come away feeling any really good about yourself even with the most you know um genuine of of reasons for saying what you want to say or or, or putting out what you want to put out it's just that kind of platform that you, you invariably you're going to come away for it, probably thinking I shouldn't have said anything. Tom? And it's obviously been a huge amount of injuries for Spurs this season. I wonder if you think the kind of stop-start nature of the season and the lack of match rhythm is even more confusing? Look, I, I think it's something you look at sort of from an overall perspective. I, I, there's no doubt that also the change in the training regime has an impact as well because it's not it's not something that <coughs> you know it's the first time I've experienced you know I've, I've, it's happened to me before when I've come into clubs that you know the first year there's always a little bit of a an uptick um, in injuries we, we've we've had sort of in yeah, unusual ones this year I mean we lost Perisic and Solomon with knee injuries you know training at the beginning of the year which was a bit you know random so you, you kind of you know, you think, you like think that's not always going to happen, but a lot of the injuries are just due the, the way we train and the way we play and, you know, players understanding that, sports science stuff understanding that, medical team understanding that and making adjustments. Some of it, I think, could be the schedule that we just haven't had a clean run at it. Um, so I think you, you, but all those things you kind of review along the way, but <clears throat> more importantly, when you get to the end of the year, I think it's important you, you keep an open mind and kind of look at every area and see, you know, because I, I, I don't think you should be dismissive of it and just think, oh, well, it was just a one-off, it's never going to happen again. It, you know, you kind of got to look into it and see whether we can do things better next year so that, you know, if, if the schedule's a bit better and we do have... You know, European football, then, um, yeah, that that adds a different sort of challenge to us. But hopefully, we're better prepared for it. It feels like a kind of high intensity game. You talk about the high speed sort of thing. It's the kind of thing you can't just do without you know, not sort of doing it over and over again. Yeah, yeah, and then you know, there's and 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 it's, some of it's just you know the players getting used to it themselves, physically, mentally, of every day, sort of training at those levels and then performing at those levels and. Um, I certainly, just my experience, I see that over time, you know, they do become, you know, their bodies adjust and they become more resilient to it. But there's also a science to it, which is not my field, that, that helps us along in that way. Um, but I think that is a contributing factor to kind of, you know, why we've had sort of the disruptions we've had. Uh, and is there, is there one thing you change in the schedule to make it a bit more smoother for everybody? Those are playing those, those are not playing. No, not really, because, I mean, again, I, I, you know, I, some of our disruptions is uh, self-inflicted. You know, if it had a better run in the Cups and if we're in Europe, then I wouldn't be sitting here doing so. Some of it's in our control. Um, but, you know, like I said, when you look at this year and, you know, I just think we've... I, I just haven't felt... And maybe it's because of the contrast of where I've come from, where, 
you know, like I said, at Celtic, you know, we were having games every three days and, and you kind of get into that mode and it just this year, the start of the year felt like that, you know, we were playing games, it was, there was rhythm, there was momentum there and then just since then we've just kind of haven't been able to get the same sort of flow and rhythm into our schedule and obviously some of that's our own sort of doing so we got, you got to, you got to accept that um, and um, you know, one way to remedy that is to make sure we, we, we get more games for ourselves next year. Change that half half to break. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, even that sort of this year was kind of a bit, bit weird. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Look, <laughs> far be it for me to, to get involved in scheduling, mate. I, I'm, I'm good at being told where to be and what to do. Yeah. Just actually one more. I'm, I'm the answer you gave us to about social media, which is interesting. Have you said that? To the players, or do you leave the young people alone? No, I, I, yeah, you kind of give them advice, but I, 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 like I said, at the same time, I, I'm always reticent to to kind of dictate because I, I'm not in their shoes, you know. And who's to say if I wasn't, you know, in my early twenties, living today as a footballer, that I wouldn't be all over social media. So I maybe sit there now. It's like when people say to me, "Well, you know, you can't get kids off their iPads or off their." PlayStations in our day were always outside. Well, to be fair, we had no option. You know, if we had the option, maybe I would have been inside too. So you've got to try and have some sort of understanding. But at the same time, I do try and provide a little bit of counsel in terms of, you know, they need to understand that everything you have, you know, access to in your, in, in your life, you know, it, for whatever good stuff you get out of it, there's always kind of a responsibility and understanding and there needs to be a maturity that there's there's a possibility of not so good stuff being there as well and you've got to be prepared for that. If you're not or if you you kind of, it affects you really badly if it comes the other way, then you're probably better off. It's probably a sense that you're not ready for entering that world. But again, that's, that's advice from an old bloke, mate. I don't know how much they listen and, you, you know, I don't know how much of it's right. So, you know, you just, like I said, all I can do is provide counsel sort of from my experience. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.